Happy birthday, Disney! The Walt Disney Company is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year and the festivities just kicked off in Disneyland. Today we are traveling through Disney's history and doing something that represents an iconic moment in each decade of that 100 years. We're going to be going on rides, eating some snacks, experiencing some shows, and taking part of the celebration here. Let's go. we got a lot to do. We have 100 years worth of stuff to do. So many years. The Walt Disney Company was founded in Hollywood in 1923 by Walt Disney and his brother Roy. It was founded as the Disney Brothers Studio, but quickly became rebranded as the Walt Disney Animation Company. That said, besides the founding, I think there's only one thing that represents the importance of this decade accurately. We just got into the park, and who should come out but Mickey Mouse and his adorable 100-year celebration outfit. It's all purple and sparkly, and I love it so much. I want his coat. Yeah. He is quite made fabulous. That decision. That's true. All of the classic friends have a D100 outfit. Mickey, Minnie, Daisy, Donald, Goofy, Pluto, and Chippendale all have these like very snazzy purple and silver outfits for the celebrations. Well done. You're rounding them all off. Thank Proud you. Of you. Yeah, all eight. The Elite Eight, the Extravagant Eight. Elite eight. The, the elite, extra eight. The elite eight. I, I like the elite. Yeah, the elite yeah. eight. Yeah. Like basketball. <laughs> yes. This also satisfies Sports. our 20s decade because, hey, guess when Mickey made it onto the scene? November 18th, 1928. As Walt Disney once said, it all started by a mouse. And so we're also starting this challenge with a mouse. Mickey's like, hi. Ah, he's going to run. <laughs> you look so handsome, Mickey. Oh, my gosh. Look at the swag. <laughs> Trip doesn't stop for Mickey. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Good to see you. Thank you. Can I get a selfie with you too, quick? Find your window. Mickey's very impressive. We found a move for us. The 1930s can really be defined by one iconic moment in Disney's history, the first full-length animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Premiering at Carthay Circle, this was really thought to be a mistake. Nobody had ever made a full-length animated feature before, and nobody believed in it. But Walt believed in the power of storytelling and brought his first princess to life as we followed the story of Snow White. To represent and celebrate the premiere of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, we will be making a wish at the wishing well and then riding through her story in Fantasyland. All right, we're ready to wish. I know the song. Hey, just a quick question. Anybody bring um, like a penny or a coin, you know, that throw in? No, I guess we're wishing from our hearts today. Yeah, we're we're, wish with our, we're with wishing our with our, yeah, with our joy, Molly said. Perfect. Hello, Mary and Bert. How are you? Are you off on a jolly holiday? <laughs> Bye! Right. Ready? I'm wishing, 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 I hope my wish comes true. It's, it's the neck grab for me. <laughs> Just like Snow White. Yeah, it sounds the same. If I close my eyes, it's like she's here. I, you know? That's a high price. What happens if I throw my credit card in size? How many, how many wishes do you think I get? People there? are throwing dollars in there, which doesn't feel like. That's what makes me want to consider that. Well, they don't have coins. This is the whole problem. I, I, I could throw a dollar. I there. don't know that a dollar will work when it gets fished out. You, sorry, you. <laughs> does the wish only happen when it gets fished out? Is that what you suggest? I think the fact that they donate all this money to make a wish yeah. means that those wishes don't come through because those dollars are going to rip. They won't rip the dry mouth. Now that we've made a wish, and I've learned that maybe my dollars don't count, uh, it's off to ride Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Now, you might know this ride by other names. For instance, originally it was known as Snow White's Adventure, and then everyone got scared, and they changed it to Snow White's Scary Adventures. And then recently it got a little bit of an update, and it changed to Snow White's Enchanted Wish. While originally the intent of this ride was that you were playing the role of Snow White going through her story, which is why she was not in the ride, today you can see the full story of Snow White from that 1937 classic, even Snow White appearing. There's some new updated effects. You'll see the nightmare fuel Wicked Queen ultimately get to go through the entire story from that first full-length animated feature that sort of started Disney's animated film run. What dwarf do you think we're gonna get? Sleepy. 
dog. That's all. I'm pretty sure those are the exact same guesses we made last time we wrote this. I always say sleepy and we, because I'm always sleepy. I'm always bashful. I'm always dark. I, yeah, I agree. This this is this feels familiar. We've done this before. I yeah. feel like this is a very familiar bit for us. Huh? Well, I said we got grumpy though, so maybe this time one of our dreams will come true. I hope so. Yeah. It's statistically unlikely that we would do the same thing again. We're going to find out. Got sleepy. That was a good one. I'm so happy. What's what's happening right now? Okay, I love that ride. I think it's a perfect, updated classic. Uh -huh. But I just noticed the dwarves only have four fingers. Wait, that's the first you're seeing this? All of them only have four fingers. That is, there, is correct. Very, this is very normal in Disney. Yeah. Mickey only has four fingers too. Yeah, lots of lots of characters with four fingers. Mickey is a mouse. Has four. Well, you know, I'm not gonna. Goofy okay. is a dog. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to mistake in corollary here. The dwarves are humans with only they're, four well, fingers. I, I I I hate to be the the technical <laughs> fantasy voice. They're not humans. I just want to be clear. And if you're talking like specifically like D and D lore, yeah, they're, they're humanoid in shape. They're 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 not humans. Okay, so. Uh, just, I don't want to, you know. I'm not here to interpret actually, Disney's but, fantasy yeah, of it. It's been a long but... time since the 30s, but like, I just am saying that. So, when Famed Adventure Tomb Poor comes out, right, there's right. this uh, trend that there are all these really high powerful characters. People have gotten all these crazy magic items. And Gary Gygax creates this adventure because he was like, I'm going to kill them. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unlife all of these really. And... Hello? Anyway, on to the 40s. We enter the 1940s where the Disney Animation Studio enters the high point of the golden age of animation with the release of Pinocchio, which has a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, and Dumbo, which has a 98%. So brilliant to fans and critics alike. And to honor those two films, we will be riding Pinocchio's Daring Journey and Casey Jr.'s Circus Train. Up first is Pinocchio's Daring Journey, which is a nightmare. It is... Um, the stuff of your waking nightmares, and while it's a classic, we're gonna go write it. If anybody's familiar with the Electric Light Parade's Pleasure Island floats, that makes an appearance in here. Not the float itself, but the genesis of the idea of that float. But anyway, it follows Pinocchio's journey as he attempts to change from a puppet into a real boy with his conscience, Jiminy Cricket. Really, Jiminy's the victim in all this. Honestly, I feel we should feel bad for Jiminy. He tries his best. Do you feel worse for Jiminy than the children being turned into donkeys to go do forced labor in the salt mine? Those kids were jerks. I feel bad for the cricket. Whoa, hot take. <laughs> hot take indeed. Wow. I was like, those kids deserved it. Those meddling kids. Alan, Alan is Michael Jordan. Hot, hot take. Alan is Stromboli. Oh. I said what I said. And they got turned into donkeys, Alan and now they work in the salt mines. Jay Worthington Foulfellow. Jay Worthington Foulfellow. <laughs> we shall go act. I have taken the stance that the children, while naughty and should not have disobeyed their parents, are still children who are lured by candy and cigars, as all children are. In some Untrue. Way. At the end of it, they are That's all right. donkeys. I've been lured, lured by, by candy and cigars. Specifically cigars. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When I was it. a young child, I too. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't 
Well, <laughs> we made it. That was a waking nightmare. Pleasure Island's a real like Lord of the Flies situation, isn't it? Yeah, there's it? a literal rough house. So it's like, come on, kids, just beat each other up. Welcome to Tobacco Row. I don't feel tobacco great. Tobacco Row. I don't feel great about it. Alan, do you still think those kids deserved it? The donkey scene of them calling for their mom and dad did tug at my heartstrings a little bit. Mama! Mama! But also, Jiminy literally jumped out and warned us and said, take a left here, champ. And we didn't. He did his best. I'll he admit. did. It has to live on his conscience. Think about Jiminy's conscience. Jiminy is the conscience. He has one too. Who, who's Jiminy's conscience? Do they keep getting smaller? It's a smaller is it like bug. A is it a microscopic it's being? Like a little flea. Yeah, like like relative to size. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel kind of bad for the kids, but also, you know, hot take. Listen to your conscience. Hot take to feel worse for Jiminy Cricket than the children who will never see their parents. He's got to live with that thought in the back of his head that what could, what else could he have done, Jiminy? Well, they will be right. working He's the got, salt mines. Yeah. He, so I but think he has survivor's guilt, which is worse. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you may be thinking. Why are they riding the Casey Jr. Circus Train instead of Dumbo the Flying Elephant? And the answer to that is simple. You can find Dumbo the Flying Elephant on either coast in Disney World or Disneyland. So we wanted something that was uniquely Disneyland, and that is the Casey Jr. Circus Train. It's also going to be comical as three grown adults try to fit on these train cars. While there aren't any specific story beats to Dumbo on this attraction, what it does give you is a great scenic view around the section of Disneyland, and you get the iconic, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can moment from Casey Jr., who is a talking train, if that wasn't clear. What you also get on this attraction is a scenic tour over Storybook Canal, and a glimpse of the patchwork quilt flower beds, which was one of Walt's favorite spots in Disneyland. And if that isn't just so very sweet. Uh, we're getting ready to fight for the cages. Yeah. We're, we're practicing fighting. Cage fighting. <laughs> Undoubtedly, the cages are the best seats on Casey Jr. Train. They're a hot commodity. I think I could take every kid in this line, though. Cage fighting. <laughs> we're ready. Your hands are Guys, we were literally the first the people on the train. Inside the train. I legitimately love the Casey Jr. Circus Train. I think you get such a quaint view of Disneyland. It's just such a quintessential Disneyland experience with the patchwork quilt, and you see all the movement and the boats going under you, and Fantasyland and the Matterhorn. We saw the monorail, which is a perfect segue into the 1950s, because of course, that is when Disneyland opened, July 17th, 1955. Undoubtedly the biggest thing that happened for the Disney company in the 50s. You know, they had some pretty good movies too. Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, but, I don't think anything compares to the opening of Walt Disney's Disneyland. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Now Disneyland, everybody told Walt this is a terrible idea. No one's going to want to go to amusement park. Amusement parks are dirty. The people that work there are a little unsavory and Walt said, not my park. It is going to be a place where adults and kids can go to have some fun together. So in honor of Disneyland, we are going to do three opening day Disneyland experiences to kind of recreate a little bit of Disneyland opening. Well, not actual Disneyland opening because it was actually a huge disaster. They called it Black Sunday. Basically everything that could go wrong did go wrong. We're just going to go have fun. For our first Disneyland opening day attraction, we are here at Toad Hall. One person in particular insisted that this be one of the opening day attractions that we ride. Can't imagine who that might be. <laughs> uh, even though there's other opening day rides like the Storybook Canals here in Fantasyland, of course, we are coming to see J. Thaddeus Toad. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride takes you on a cruise to nowhere in particular, where you will then drunk drive, crash your car, and go to hell like any good children's attraction. For real, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride is always a must-do for me when I come to Disneyland because it does feel so quintessentially Disneyland. It feels so quintessentially 1950s. Everything from how tiny the queue is all the way to this style of ride vehicle to kind of the way the scenes unfold in front of you. It's just a classic Disney dark ride, and we don't have it in Magic Kingdom anymore, so we need to celebrate it here. 
Next up on our opening day adventure, we are headed to the Jungle Cruise. Hello, thank you. Jungle Cruise, an opening day ride both here in Disneyland and in the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World in 1971. The Jungle Cruise was Walt's dream of bringing his true life adventure series to the guests of Disneyland. He wanted people that maybe weren't gonna sail around the entire world to witness exotic creatures and exotic lands on exotic rivers. And actually he wanted it to be real live animals. Unfortunately, real live animals are very expensive. They didn't have a lot of money to build Disneyland to begin with. Real live animals take up a lot of room. They didn't have a lot of land. And most of the animals Walt wanted to showcase were nocturnal. So there's no way to guarantee that the guests would be able to see them. Eventually, they decided to use these crude mechanical animals. Yes, they're mechanical, not animatronics. More on that in a little bit. However, Walt's dream of real animals dazzling his guests would come true in 1998 when Disney's Animal Kingdom opened in Walt Disney World. But for now, Jungle Cruise is the punny attraction we all know and love with iconic jokes such as the backside of water. And uh, it's been dazzling guests since 1955. This is Officer Ranger in Africa. It goes on for miles and 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 miles. It's very feature in a jungle. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to point out a few of you right now. Oh, look at the zebra in that rock right there. That's called zebra on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's good feeling. Take you guys up into a minute. Quick, Max, what's your favorite Jungle Cruise joke? Ah, uh, ooh. My favorite Jungle Cruise joke. That is really putting me on the spot. I'm trying to think of any Jungle Cruise joke now. <laughs> Suddenly, every recollection I've ever had of any Jungle Cruise joke has left my brain. I can think of zero Jungle Cruise jokes. Ginger snaps. Not because it's my favorite. Well, I guess when it's the only one I can remember, it is my favorite. <laughs> Quick, Alan, what's your favorite Jungle Cruise joke? Take a look to your right here. That's limestone. Most people take it for granted. <laughs> Rock jokes. I can confirm that was a joke. I didn't remember it, but it was a joke. It's one of our bolder attractions. <laughs> Molly, yeah. what was your favorite Jungle Cruise joke? I know it's crazy that we'd ask you. you asked me. That's, That's so wild. Weird. I definitely didn't expect for you to ask me the same joke. You kind of took mine though. I like that rock joke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, I like, I'd like to take a moment to point out a few of my favorite plants here on the Jungle Cruise. Thank you. And to round out the 1950s with our Disneyland opening day journey, of course, we are going to ride the Disneyland Railroad. Folks that knew Walt Disney often joked that he built Disneyland just so he could have a bigger train set. Walt Disney loved trains. He was a train enthusiast. He had a small train in his backyard. And whenever he described Disneyland, he made sure to explain that there was a train encircling the park. Here in Disneyland, there are four stops around the park. The main train station is on Main Street, USA. Then you've got the stop here in New Orleans Square, a stop at Mickey's Toontown Fair, and one in Tomorrowland. But we are choosing to board here in New Orleans Square because if you listen closely to the telegraph from the telegraph office here, if you were to understand Morse code, you could translate to, to all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land, which is Walt Disney's dedication speech to Disneyland from 1955. Now, if you are only gonna take one leg of the train, might I suggest Tomorrowland to Main Street USA because you will see the dinosaurs and the Grand Canyon diorama that were from the 6465 World's Fair on the Ford's Magic Skyway. But we'll hold on that. We'll talk about the 60s when we get there. Up next, we find ourselves in the 1960s. And we have to acknowledge the incredible progression of 
audio animatronics made by the Walt Disney Company in this time. Now it started in 1963 with the Enchanted Tiki Room where you have audio animatronic birds that sing a song and take you to the story of all of these great tiki beasts and gods here in their enchanted room. Now that progressed very quickly in the 1964 and 65 World's Fair when you had things like Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, which is a standalone audio animatronic of a human that stands up out of a chair and tells you a story and emotes throughout the entirety of it. And who better than to tell that story but Walt Disney's favorite president, Abraham Lincoln. It's crazy to think that between the years of 1963 to 1967, when Pirates of the Caribbean was introduced, you saw such a massive improvement of the audio animatronic form. So let's go visit them. As impressive as the Tiki Room birds are, and they are very impressive when you consider the time, 1963, when they were actually created, I mean, the attention to detail for them is phenomenal. Walt actually caught it and made sure that they looked like they were breathing throughout the show, which is just fantastic attention to detail. That is plussed heartily here in Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. Now, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln was not the only show that was exhibited in the 1964-1965 World's Fair. It also included the Carousel of Progress, Ford's Magic Skyway, as well as It's a Small World. The interior of the theater here for Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln now features a new exhibit. It is Disney 100 Years of Wonder, film to attraction, attraction to film. And I'm excited to take a look at all of these incredible tributes for the last 100 years of the Disney Company. How about you? What did you find? A nightmare. That is unsettling. The 16th President of these United States, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln had not expected his words to live beyond their temporary moment. Our defense is in the preservation of the spirit which prizes liberty as the heritage of all men. And you have planted the seeds of despotism around your own doors. At what point shall we expect the approach of danger? By what means shall we fortify against it? Our last stop in the 60s is Pirates of the Caribbean. It is just wild how much animatronics evolved from 1963 to 1967, and this certainly is the pinnacle of that expression. In fact, according to Marty Sklar, this attraction truly is the gold standard by which all attractions are measured. Pirates of the Caribbean is the perfect Disney attraction because of all the audio animatronics, the story that's being told, the catchy song, it just has it all, and I couldn't think of a better way to wrap the 60s. It is also worth noting that Walt Disney died in 1966, and Pirates of the Caribbean launched here in 1967, so it was one of the last attractions Walt Disney himself worked on. I think the craziest thing about all of these audio animatronics is that you would not have things today like Hondo or the Shaman of Song without the Enchanted Tiki Room Birds, Abraham Lincoln, and the animatronics that you find on Pirates of the Caribbean. Animatronics are a staple on a ton of Disney attractions, and it's something that we see expressed throughout the theme parks. It's just amazing. And it's just wild to think that all of that technology that we see today started in 1963. As we reach the 70s, of course, the most iconic thing of the 1970s for Disney was the opening of Walt Disney World, Walt Disney's Florida project that unfortunately he did not get to see come to fruition, but dedicated by his brother Roy in 1971. Obviously, we are not in Walt Disney World, but cut to a montage of us having fun there. In 
lieu of us actually being in Walt Disney World, we will pay homage to the Florida Project by writing a Walt Disney World original, a roller coaster that got its start in the Magic Kingdom, Spas, I mean Space Mountain. Space Mountain opened in the Magic Kingdom in 1975 before eventually being expanded to other Disney theme parks. While over the years, Space Mountain has taken many forms from overlays like Hyperspace Mountain to entirely different interpretations of the ride, like from Earth to the Moon in Disneyland Paris, the original will always belong to Walt Disney World and the Magic Kingdom where it got its start. Time to get totally tubular, y'all, because we have made it to the 1980s, which means we get to celebrate the start of one of my favorite companies and eventually would become an acquisition of Disney's, Pixar. Pixar Animation Studios was founded in 1986 by John Lasseter, Dr. Ed Kasmal, a little help from Steve Jobs. And initially they started with shorts such as Knick Knack and Tin Toy before creating the first full-length computer animated film Toy Story, which premiered in 1995. But we are celebrating Pixar as our 1980s moment in the decades because that's when it was founded. And I think we can all agree Pixar had a huge impact on the Disney company, not only in a new way of doing animation, but by producing some of the most beloved films and characters in all of the Disney cinematic universe. And there is no better place to celebrate the founding of Pixar than a land dedicated entirely to Pixar. Pixar Pier is the reimagined version of Paradise Pier, which is what this land opened as when Disney California Adventure opened. And it is dedicated to many of the beloved characters found in the Pixar universe. You've got Toy Story Midway Mania, you've got the Incredicoaster, you've got Jesse's Critter Carousel, the Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind, you've got boardwalk style games named after Pixar characters, snack shops like Bing Bong sweet shop and the adorable snowman and the poultry palace themed after toy story characters you can meet pixar characters so this is truly the land inspired by pixar to celebrate the 1980s and the birth of pixar we are going to face our fears that's right friends we are headed to the pixar pal around formerly known as mickey's death i mean mickey's fun wheel and yes we're riding the swinging cars everyone is very excited so excited! Now, everyone knows my favorite Pixar character is Buzz Lightyear. Sure. But who's yours? Al from Al's Toy Barn. Wow. I'm kidding. It's James Sullivan. That's a good choice. A strong choice. I adore me some Sully. Uh, disgust. Hey, go. Uh, Do you see yourself in disgust? She is me. You are I her. I am her. We are one. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Well, maybe we'll get one of those characters on our Pixar Pal Round car. I hope so. Oh. Or we'll get Jesse. The Pixar Pal Around is, in fact, a Ferris wheel. There are two different kinds of gondolas. There are the stable gondolas and the swinging gondolas. And the swinging gondolas are a little bit of a nightmare because they swing with quite a swift velocity. So. We are going to ride Pixar Pal around, and then as a treat for ourselves being so brave, we're going to go get a little snicky snack over here at Bing Bong's candy shop. Oh my gosh. Very happy person. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Hello, Joy. I wish I felt what you feel right now. It looks like a knockoff. I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. Oh, one side. Is. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it so much. I hate it so much. Why is this happening? <laughs> <laughs> we know. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
good, 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 good. You know, I have a better idea than Bing Bong Sweet Stuff. Okay. Okay, so, Molly, I, I appreciate eating a cheese on a stick, but I, I don't know what this has to do with Pixar. Well, the only reason we were talking about Pixar was because it was founded in the 80s. You know what else was invented in the 80s? Frankenfurters. They were invented in Frankfurt, Germany in the 1480s, but that's not the point. You know what's related to a Frankenfurter, aka a hot dog? A corn dog. You know what you can get at the corn dog castle? Cheese on a stick. Therefore, cheese on a stick belongs in the 80s. And you just been on again. <laughs> As we head into the 90s, of course, we can only think of the Disney renaissance. After a down period for Disney animation, the 90s are defined by Disney classics such as Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Hercules, Pocahontas, Tarzan, and more that absolutely redefined what animation would look like moving into the modern age. Uh, in celebration of the 1990s, we will celebrate the Disney renaissance through both food and show. We will be trying the gray stuff, we've heard it's delicious, at the Red Rose Tavern, and then attending Tale of the Lion King, a musical recreation of the Lion King on stage here at Disneyland. I love the 90s, it is quintessential nostalgic Disney for me and my generation. I'm so happy to dive in. And yes, before you jump into the comments and start telling me, uh, the Disney Renaissance started in 1989. I know, I started in 1989 too, but I would call myself a 90s baby, not an 80s baby. We can all agree that the Disney Renaissance is quintessential 90s, right? Right. Now to attain the great stuff today, we will be going to Red Rose Tavern, a quick service restaurant in Fantasyland of Disneyland that is Beauty and the Beast themed. You'll find Beauty and the Beast art along all the walls, a Gaston section, roses throughout the windows. And while it normally has American casual flatbreads, salads, chicken tenders, it will also, because of the theming, be the place you can find the gray stuff. We have attained the gray stuff. It's bigger than I remember it being, but it is cookies and cream on a shortbread cookie. Let's dive in. Oh, it's thick in the middle. What's in there, cake? No, it's, there's cake in there. Now, as someone who's intimately familiar with some characters from Beauty and the Beast, how was the gray stuff? Was it delicious? It was very good. It is incredibly and wildly different than what you get in Walt Disney World, which you can get at uh, Beast's Castle, at Be Our Guest, or sometimes, if you're lucky, on the top of a cupcake at Gaston's Tavern, which is, uh, in my opinion, the better place to go. This gray stuff has a base of a shortbread. On top of that, you have red velvet cake and then a raspberry jam with a raspberry, and that is then covered in gray stuff. And when I tell you that there are a lot of flavors and textures happening here, that doesn't even begin to describe it. Each of the elements are individually very, very tasty. I love a red velvet cake, I love a raspberry jam, I love gray stuff, which is just cookies and cream mousse, and I also love shortbread. I think if you had chosen two of these to go together, and serve them that way, it would have been good. For example, maybe spitballing the gray stuff on top of a shortbread cookie, and then also give me an option of a red velvet cake with raspberry jam on top. But altogether, that's just a lot. Things no, it's too awesome. many things. But speaking of too many things, we also couldn't resist a few of the loaded potato barrels, which to the rest of the world are tater tots. It's got beef gravy, big chunks of braised beef in there, cheese curds, pickled onions. So we're gonna dig into these too. Those are quite good. I think they're definitely better than the ones at Friars Nook in the Magic Kingdom. The beef is surprisingly tender and juicy. They've got those big cheese curds on there. The potato barrels are cooked nicely and a little Christmas from the uh, onion. Not a bad snack. Gray stuff eaten is time for a second celebration of the Disney Renaissance and the 90s. Seeing Tale of the Lion King. This musical interpretation of the animated classic brings the story to life through song, and my favorite is actually a little bit of a change up for I Just Can't Wait to Be King, where they make it a duo between Simba and Scar, giving the song a whole new interpretation and sort of meaning. It's very fun. There 
is truly no better place to introduce the 2000s than here in Disney California Adventure. Mainly because DCA opened on February 8th of the year 2001. And not only that, we have what is perhaps one of the most impactful events in, for Disney represented here, and that is the acquisition of Marvel. So we are on our way to Avengers Campus. Uh, and we'll see if we can sort of bask in that marvel glow. First stop on the Marvel tour, shawarma, the New York special. I'm gonna be the first to tell you, I don't know if this is authentic or not, but what I can tell you is it's tasty. Chicken is cooked beautifully, fluffy, fluffy naan. Oh, and there's actually spice to it. Everybody, there's spice. The fact that Disneyland gets this from a cart, so good. You like it? It's good. Step two of our Marvel experience is to go and watch the Spider-Man Stuntronic. And you remember how I was just talking about the evolution of animatronics? Well, that Stuntronic, that Spider-Man humanoid that flings themselves into the air across Avengers Campus? Yeah, that's an animatronic, folks. That is a robot. And that is bananas when you think about it. And it's nice to watch Spider-Man go from a tumbling extravaganza into a death-defying feat. Would you call that a tumbling extravaganza? <laughs> I, I personally would. I would agree that that is some <laughs> I, hardcore parkour. That's parkour. Extravaganza. <laughs> parkour. Is a big word. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, Molly, that was two stories up. That was a tumbling extravaganza. If I've ever seen. He did it for a crowd. <laughs> a lot of people tumble Listen, for their you, own benefit. You, he did it for a crowd. You know who else tumbles like for a crowd? Toddlers. Toddlers also go to their gymnastic meets and tumble for a crowd. Well, so. he, he did it beautifully. I, 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 you know, it's the Stuntronic's amazing. I'm just oh. thinking about. There are times the Stuntronic doesn't fire, and I'm just thinking about the people that come watch the Spider-Man show only to see the guy do like somersaults and be like, <laughs> parkour. Really? <laughs> but he did say, "This is so Spider-Man." <laughs> Which is a fun adjective. I've not heard that before. So Spider-Man. It's it is so Spider-Man. So Spider the third item on our list here in the 2000s in Disney California Adventure is to go slang some webs. We all brought our web slingers this time. It will not help me. I am still going to lose, but I am excited that my friends get to compete and get to display feats of skill <laughs> on a, this attraction while I attempt to work out who is shooting which web. It's time for Web Slingers, and we've got great news. We found our bands. We remembered our Web Slingers. These are attachments that you can purchase at the Web Supplier Store here, and this one gives you three webs for every one that you shoot. There's also several different character enhancers you can buy to do even more things and do better at Web Slingers. Actually, speaking of that, you know, we thought that Alan needed a bit of an advantage. He's already at a natural disadvantage when playing on Web Slingers. Can't always tell which web is his. He's colorblind. So we decided he needed a little bit of an advantage going in. Where is Alan, by the way? Have you seen him? Oh. Oh. Great. Okay, so we are approaching web slingers. We have our slingers and I have my slinger attachment to power myself through the mystic arts and maybe get a semi better score. I don't even want to win. I just want to get a better score than I normally get. In any case, web slingers is an attraction that takes you into the web open house where you are taking your slinger super powered autonomous vehicle, supposedly or what was originally planned to be a tour of the facility. But Peter Parker and his spider bots run amok and it is your job, you and your party, to come and help Spider-Man, certainly not Peter Parker, help Spider-Man rescue the web facility and most importantly, ensure that Mr. Stark does not find out that Peter has made another flub up. Oh, it's got our web tag on it, that's funny. You did it! Well, it seems to have worked. I didn't come in last. That's right. I still can't see the colors, but I saw my little orb things blow up. You yeah. are one with the mystic arts. 
should have picked the Iron Man one. <laughs> no, no, no you love Doctor Strange. You are Doctor Strange. You believe math is magic. That's right. Alan got over 200,000 points, giving him second place. First time ever. And the reign of your web, resident web slinger continues. But Unsurprising. Very maybe. good. Very yeah. good. Oh, that wraps up our 2000s what here a decade. in DCA. What, what a, a decade. decade. That was a fun one. Yeah. On to the 2010s. Indeed. As we stand in Galaxy's Edge to introduce the 2010s, where we're going to talk a lot about Star Wars, we pick the most passionate, knowledgeable person of the trio. Hey, I'm here to talk about the 2010s. And yes, I am standing in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge here in Disneyland because Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opened on both coasts in 2019. But more importantly on 2019, as far as the Disney company as a whole, that is when Disney Plus launched. Disney Plus launched in November of 2019, being a huge financial success for Disney and launching some incredible hit shows such as The Mandalorian, Obi-Wan, Book of Boba Fett, Loki, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, WandaVision, the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, one of my personal favorites, The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom, Imagineering Story, and so much more. So to celebrate Disney Plus and its launch at the end of the 2010s, we are going to head around Disneyland to see if we can maybe spot some characters or do some activities that have to do with some of those popular shows, including starting with The Mandalorian, which from what I understand about The Mandalorian, it's a guy, about a guy named Mandalorian. Mando, and he has like this tiny space baby. Okay, give me the microphone. <laughs> the the Mandal Mandalorian is a creed. It's not a it's not a people. It's not it's not a person. It's a you know what? This is a lost cause. Can we but go wait. find? Let's just go find okay, him. Okay, last time you had to explain to me that Boba Fett and Mando are not the same person. Okay, so Boba Fett wears Mandalorian armor. So he's also a Mandalorian. Can we just? It's just so. There's 50 years of context you need. I don't have time. It's so bizarre to be in Galaxy's Edge whenever I come to Disneyland because we're in Disneyland Park, but my brain thinks I'm in Hollywood Studios right now. The two lands are almost exactly the same. They both have Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. They both have Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. They both have an Oga's Cantina and a Docking Bay 7 and a Milk Stand. But there are some slight differences. Like, for example, Disneyland, per usual, gets better food at Oga's and Docking Bay and Cat Sacka's. They also have better characters here. You could meet Boba Fett. You could meet Mando. You could meet Finnick Shan. You can't meet those characters in Walt Disney World. Hello, Grogu. <laughs> well, we did in fact meet Mando, who I just learned that's not his name. What's his name? Din Djarin is his name. His name is the Viper. <laughs> Nope. Also, it's really cute because Baby Yoda moves and interacts with you. He sure does. Grogu. I've, I've given up. I've given up. Now. Listen, listen. I'm a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge fan more than I am a Star Wars fan. I think it's a feat of Imagineering. I think Rise of the Resistance is the best attraction I ever built. I think these lands are so cool and so immersive and so fun. So that is my joy with Star Wars. And I appreciate that it is other people's fandoms the way Harry Potter is mine. I just... I'm, I'm too behind on all the backstory. It's too late now. It's, there's too much more. I can't. And to round out Disney Plus, we are hoping to spot someone from one of the Marvel series, maybe Loki or Falcon. Unfortunately, Bucky doesn't make appearances there. Maybe we'll ride Guardians, but we're headed to find someone from the MCU. Made it over to Avengers Campus on the quest for some Avengers, and wouldn't you know it, we have found both Loki and Black Widow. Now, I know Black Widow is a full film, but if you remember, it was one of the first films released on Disney Premier Access, which is when you could buy it at home and watch it on Disney Plus the same day that it came out in theaters. It was kind of that weird transitional period between people going back to the movie theaters and people still doing the streaming thing. And then, of course, we've also got Loki here, star of one of the most highly rated shows on Disney Plus. So unfortunately their lines cut so we're not able to meet them today, but we did see them. So I think it counts. Plus I got to meet Loki the other day and we took this nice photo, so. All right, well, we are on to the final decade, the 2020s. Yeah, 
And to ring in our final decade, we actually bring it a bit full circle. It all started with a mouse and we'll be ending it with a mouse as well. The newest attraction brought to Disneyland in 2023, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Now, if you are an East Coast Disney goer, you'll know that we've had this in Disney's Hollywood Studios since 2020, but it just opened in Mickey's Toontown at Disneyland, and it's not exactly the same, mostly the same, but a couple changes for Disneyland. And so we round out our 100 years of Disney with the newest attraction in a Disney park, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. You know, I think it's fitting that this 100 year journey begins and ends with Mickey Mouse. Yeah, I agree. It all started with a mouse. We met Mickey for our first decade, and now we go with him on the Runaway Railway. Although, listen, I'm gonna be honest. I think especially when it comes to Goofy, I'm not, I'm not totally on board with where we've gone over this hundred years. <laughs> I do think though, this version is the perfect way to end this hundred year challenge because the theme of the Toontown Mickey Mini Runaway Railway is all about Mickey. It's a celebration of Mickey and all of his iconic roles throughout the years. So let's do it. Let's visit the El Capi Toon Theater. <laughs> And that takes us through a hundred years of Disney history. And now we're in the present where the celebrations have kicked off in Disneyland in grand style. For starters, the parks look amazing. They've got this beautiful hundred years of wonder decor everywhere, the purple and silver banners, especially beautiful on the castle where the three good fairies from Sleeping Beauty have decorated in most glorious fashion. Little fun fact I want to point out about the stars that you'll see right there on top of Sleeping Beauty Castle and throughout the decorations. They're off kilter, off center, because Imagineer John Hench, one of the most legendary Imagineers, actually designed many of the buildings. He often drew little stars on his memos and notes to other Imagineers and they were always kind of uneven as far as the shapes go. So that is a nod to him. Of course, with any good Disney celebration, you're gonna have tons of treats and snacks. Many of them are just purple or silver overlays to classic snacks like apples. There's new popcorn buckets and sippers, but you'll find special treats throughout the parks. There's also a monorail that's been wrapped in the beautiful iridescent 100 years logo. And there's a ton, and I mean a ton, of merchandise in both a 100 years of wonder and a Disney era's collection honoring the studio. Check it out. zip a hoodie, Crocs, spirit jersey, water bottle, lounge fly, studio ears, Starbucks tumbler, kid sweatshirt, kid long sleeve t-shirt, different kid sweatshirt, festive Chip and Dale, different kids t-shirt, different kids t-shirt, festive Mickey, Festive Mini, Plastic Mickey, Plastic Mini, Rubik's Cube, Kids Sweatpants, Kids Skirt, Kids Dress, Kids Onesie, Mickey Spirit Jersey, Ear Hat, Mini T-Shirt, So Pen, Blanket, Pillow, Picture Frame, Sassy Mickey with Accessories, Pluto, Dog Spirit Jersey, and Dog Collar, Walt Disney's Disneyland T-Shirt, Regular Disneyland T-Shirt, In the Era's Collection now, Mickey Shirt, Picture Frame, Hat, Phone Holder, Pillow, Memo board, bookend shaped like Mickey shoes, hoodie, baby outfit, cotton candy, fancy popcorn, ornament, 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 ornament set, little notepad in a typewriter, hat, long sleeve shirt, Mickey Mouse shirt for adults, a magnifying glass for some reason, Mickey Mouse shirt, Mickey Mouse beret, studios shorts, studio sweatshirt, I don't know what this is, maybe a cup for your pencils on your desk? mug, nightlight shaped like the water tower, ears, bag, notebooks, PJ shorts, sweatpants, button down shirt, tote, dress, kid shirt, baby outfit, adult t-shirt. I've actually been wearing this all day, but you wouldn't know because it's cold here. See, I wasn't kidding. It's a lot of merchandise. 
Perhaps my favorite way that they're celebrating, though, is that the cast members here have been able to get new name tags, and instead of listing their hometown or their university, it says their favorite Disney character. So we've had a ton of fun. It's actually been a highlight of the weekend for me, just talking to all different cast members and seeing what characters are on their name tags. My name is Day, and my favorite character is Tinkerbell. Hi, my name is Sabrina, my favorite character is Pegasus. My name's Zag, I chose Kronk. He's my favorite character from Ember's New Groove. Hi, my name's Kara, and my character is Thumper because I'm just a thumping away. <laughs> Yours is the best one I've seen. Fix it, Felix! Amazing! <laughs> Hello, it's me, Cabo, here on Avengers Campus, and my favorite character is Squirt. <laughs> Not a Marvel character? You know what? I like Disney movies too. I know I work here with a lot of the Avengers, but uh, I like to go home and watch a Disney movie. So uh, I'm Amy, and I have uh, Lola for the Lola Joy from Obi Wan. I'm Natalie, and I have Hey Hey because same brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Julia, and I have Ahsoka Tano. I'm Harvey, and naturally you have Spider-Man. Finally a Marvel person. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Cher. I am Mulan. And I'm Steven, and I chose Shang-Chi. But probably the most exciting thing here at Disneyland there are two brand new nighttime shows. The first is Wondrous Journeys over at Disneyland. This is an all new fireworks and projection show. The fireworks are incredible over Sleeping Beauty Castle. The projections travel all the way down Main Street. You will see the Blue Fairy fly. You will see Baymax fly. It is incredible. It is probably the best fireworks show I've ever seen in Disney. Maybe not better than Wishes, but that might just be my nostalgia talking. It's an absolutely beautiful show. I'm, the music is amazing. The effects are amazing. Now, do note that as of right now, the fireworks portion of it is only showing on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday to Thursday, it's just the projections on the castle on down Main Street, but those are worth seeing in of itself. We, however, are headed right now to World of Color One. This is the special World of Color, brand new for the 100 years of wonder celebration. We've actually booked ourselves a little World of Color dessert party to put a cherry on top of this evening and this time at Disneyland together. So we're headed there now. World of Color is here at Disney California Adventure and it is a very cool and very unique show. Projections on water, colors, light effects, absolutely stunning. The music is wonderful. And again, this is a brand new version of the show. It's incredibly popular as you can imagine. So if you don't wanna book a dessert party, my recommendation would be to join the virtual queue for the show, which opens up at noon. Wanna be really prompt, use that world clock to count yourself down. And if you get into the World of Color virtual queue, it will give you a show time. And that just means you have access to one of the reserved viewing areas. So you know you've got a spot. Still get there early to make sure you've got the best spot possible. But this is a can't miss show when you come to Disneyland. World of Color 1, spoiler alert! just been a sort of dress rehearsal we're just getting started it's definitely a new show it definitely has some some new scenes in it um there's a star wars section i'm yeah, not a even a star section. wars person as we learned earlier in galaxy's edge <laughs> and the star wars part is awesome they use not only the projections not only the the lights but also the background on oh. incredicoaster and on pixar uh play around the the power around the ferris wheel so good they turned it into the death star they did it's i have to say of all the world of color shows i've seen it is the most creative use of the entirety I of what you see when you I are agree. sitting there at the viewing area. Brilliant. Yeah, during the Marvel section, they do the portal scene and they use it as one of the portals, like Doctor Strange opening the portals. Yeah. I would also like to say, and I know that we talked about this in the show, but 
there is a section where Mufasa is talking and you hear it behind you. Yeah. So they're even using new yeah. sound effects as well. I also want to commend them. They use a lot of the same movies that you're going to see in other shows, Lion King, Moana, Encanto, but they used, I thought, different parts of those shows. Sure. Like for Lion King, they use... Simba talking to Mufasa and then him running back to the Pride Lands, which is my favorite part with that beautiful score. Yeah. In uh, Mulan, they use her fighting the Huns and yeah, taking the, down the mountain. The it's awesome. Oh, yeah. the avalanche section is amazing. It's awesome. Um, and it starts and ends with Walt, so I'm a yeah. puddle when I watch those shows. I would recommend checking in a little bit early for that. It was a little bit of a lengthy check-in process that's a little bit further away from the actual seating location itself. However, once you got there, each of us got individual little packets of desserts and treats that I was actually pretty surprised by the volume of what we got, as well as two beverages of your choice, alcoholic or non. Um, yeah, I think for what you're getting for a place to be seated during a show that frequently fills up and is standing room only, I gotta say, it, it feels worth it. I would definitely book the dessert party again. I already texted my mom and said we should book it next time we're here. And don't quote me, but I think you could have more than two beverages if you had gone early. So, <laughs> you know, worth it for some, not worth we it didn't. for others, but definitely see the new world of color, I think. For sure. Absolutely. Well, we went through a hundred years of Disney history. What was your favorite decade? Today or in life? Sorry, today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that is of the things we've done. Yeah. So of the things we did today, my favorite decade was the 50s. I liked getting to go and do all like the sort of opening day stuff here in Disneyland. As a Disney history buff and somebody who just generally loves everything about this and the history, I, it was amazing. Also, we had an incredible Jungle Cruise skipper. Yeah, he was very good. Yeah. All right, well, I won't lie. Going through Toad Hall was probably going to top my <laughs> list, but uh, you know what? The nostalgia of the 90s gets me all the time. Uh, whether it's a surprising gray stuff or the music of Lion King, I, I mean, that is what, that's the version of Disney I grew up with, and so probably will always top my list uh, in terms of those decades. Present day was definitely fun because I love World of Color and I loved the fireworks when I saw them the other night. But I have to say, I like the year 2009. I love the Marvel stuff. I love Avengers yeah. Campus. It's one of my favorite things about coming to Disneyland. So getting the shawarma, seeing the Stuntronic, seeing you finally crush at Web Slingers with I'm your cool Doctor that Strange. Wasn't your yeah, favorite decade. Was your favorite Honestly, thing. I loved the, being able the fact that they made a Doctor Strange. <laughs> Don't even like to it. I don't even like him, but it's the <laughs> magic of math that has truly pushed me over the edge. He's your to, new favorite to, superhero. From, from below average to relative mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man web slingers. I also like the 20s because I like meeting Mickey. I also like yeah. the 60s because I like pirates. That's my favorite uh, 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 Disneyland. Uh, uh, I also like one the day, 80s because I love day, Pixar. One day. All right. <laughs> Clearly, we had an awesome day at Disneyland, and hopefully you had fun going through 100 years of history with us. Let us know what your favorite decade was as well. We'd love to see it in the comments down below. And please hit that like button. If you're new here, subscribe, and join us on the next adventure wherever it may be. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. I'm Max. And I'm Alan. And it's been so magical. Bye! Bye. Y'all want to get some cheese on a stick? Again? I could go for a third.